With me now, on the left, Dr. Joe Vipon, who is an emergency room physician in Alberta, frequently a guest on our network, and he's also, critically, we're going to talk about this in a moment, the president of the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment. So longtime dad climate activist and his 15-year-old daughter, Sadie, who is in her own right becoming quite a strong voice as a climate activist, and she's also there, as you can see. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us on. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I am going to start with you, Dr. Vipon, because I understand you've told CBC, we know you from many years of action in climate work, that you've declined an invitation to this conference in the past out of a concern that you wouldn't make enough of, a, of an impact to justify the flight from a carbon standpoint. So there you are in Glasgow for COP26. Why is this time different? Well... I mean, the, the biggest thing is my daughter. I'm here predominantly as a chaperone, not as a delegate. And we have other members of the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment who are attending within the blue zone, doing that important work of negotiations. But my important work is to support my daughter in the learning and the, the giving that she's doing on climate. Well, then let me turn right there to you, because, uh, Sadie, you're in the green zone. The blue zone is where the leaders and the officials are doing their thing. The green zone where activists like you and a lot of the world's youth who are gathered there in Glasgow. What is your role there? Really, it's mostly just to participate in the events. I have been learning so much. I have did four events yesterday and I did one event today and so far they've been really inspiring, really interesting. A notable one was a NASA astronaut, which was so cool to learn about. What do you think and is the most important thing you've learned so far, Sadie, on this journey of yours? Talk about the feminism. Well, I have been to a couple of events that are stationed around uh, feminism and climate action, and that is super important. And the event that I just went to was about what we can do as individuals to combat the climate crisis, and that gave me a lot of hope. So, okay, I'm going to come back to that idea of hope. But when you say what individuals can do, one of the things that you're doing, and we have covered on CBC, is you're one of 15 litigants taking Canada's federal government to court because you want, legally, to assure a safe climate future. I'm wondering if anyone there knows that and if people have approached you wanting to hear about your particular tactics and approach. Not yet, but if they do, I would be happy to talk to them and tell them about my lawsuit. Well, part of this is being, we, we can't see that right there. I'm looking for the cameras around you, but as you speak to me on our camera, you're also being filmed for a documentary. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the documentary is about youth empowerment in regard to climate action, um, COP26 is the finale of the documentary, pretty much. And um, there's another uh, youth in Glasgow that is also part of the documentary as well. So you're going to be featuring in something that we will see as you've uh, started on your path, which now involves that, that legal action. I'm wondering, um, as you fight for what the, the lawsuit says, a safe climate future, what, what is that? What is a safe climate future as you define it, Sadie? Well, honestly, it should be without the worry that I have today. I have already been affected by the climate crisis in many ways. The past couple of summers have been terrible for Calgary in regard to smoke. And, of course, there was the 2013 flood that I had to be evacuated from. And I am super worried that the effects of the climate crisis will continue to get worse. And it, the science has shown that it will continue to get worse. So I just want a future where I don't have to worry about the climate, where I can worry about getting into a university or something like that. Normal plans for a young person's life. You probably heard what the leaders were saying yesterday and continue to say today. They're talking 
uh, in very strong terms about protecting the future for young people like yourself. I'm wondering, do you believe the politicians and world leaders are taking this issue seriously now? Well, as we have seen in the past, there have been some empty promises shared by the politicians, but I really hope that this year will be the year that they take it seriously. I listened to a speech, I'm not sure of her name, but she asked the politicians to open up their hearts. And that is something that I also urge the politicians to do. It was a really, really moving speech. Yeah, we listened to the, uh, uh, the Prime Minister, I think, of Barbados speak. I yes. think she had the most powerful speech yesterday. And I, I urge people to, to go listen to that. Sorry, we're having some tripod <laughs> no problem. issues. Here. Are you okay? Can we continue? Because yeah, I have a couple good. of questions for you, Dr. Vipon, now. Um, even though you're not there, maybe officially, as far as your physicians for the environment, we are running a report this morning that talks about the immediate health benefits that we would derive from climate action. And then conversely, we're talking a lot about the dangers to our health from uh, inaction and from climate change. How much talk are you hearing there about that aspect of climate science? And I ask you that because I wonder whether you, you think it might have a very great impact as a type of message if you were to focus a climate change message through the lens of our health. Yeah, I think it's really important because, you know, for so long, the messaging has been save the polar bears, save the tree frogs. And the reality is, um, is that unfortunately humans, although we think polar bears are pretty cute and tree frogs are pretty nice, we don't really change our behaviors based on um, trying to save those, those animals. What we really care about is human beings. And even more so, we care about the human beings that are around us that we love and we care for. And so health is that connection that uh, links the climate crisis to our behavior and to the ones that we love. And so the more that we understand that this is not some esoteric threat, that this is a real thing that's having impacts on, on those that we love, uh, I think we're more likely to have behavior change and political change. I wonder if that's something we'll, we'll hear about increasingly in the future. I'm wondering too, Dr. Vipon, as you pay attention to what Canada has done, Canada has been involved in this agreement on preventing deforestation that we talked about yesterday, Canada taking a leading role in discussing carbon pricing, Canada committing to a hard cap on emissions. What do you think of the position Canada has taken thus far? Yeah, I mean, I, I worry about what my daughter is saying as well. The, the, the truth is, is we're talking about deforestation while we're logging Ferry Creek in BC and, and other old growth uh, sites. We're taking a position on um, coal mining when my own government in Alberta is talking about uh, mining the eastern slopes. Um, I think the report is coming out very, very soon on that. Um, so it, it has to be a lot more about true policy and less about um, talking about uh, these aspirational goals. Until we actually do what needs to be done, you know, physics doesn't really give a crap about politics. <laughs> well, that kind of sums it up in, in a pretty succinctly there. Uh, again, talking a last question to you, Dr. Vipon, as you combine both of your roles. What have we learned from the global response to the pandemic that we either can apply to the climate change issue or want to avoid in the climate change fight? Yeah, I mean, there's there's two big things. The first is that when we actually want to do something big and bold, like support um, all of our, our our workers that were unable to work, the, especially the surface workers that were unable to work through the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we did it. We just we just decided we were going to do it, and and we did it. So if we, when we have the political will, we can get it done. The other thing that's a little bit more sobering is, despite those massive lockdowns last year our carbon emissions only dropped 7%. And we need something similar of a 7% drop per year over the next um, decade in order to start to achieve our, our goals for net zero. That is a daunting task. And I don't think a lot of people have, have absorbed the amount of um, drastic change that's going to have to happen in our society in order to protect pe people like my daughter. Like, they deserve the same beautiful life that I've had, the same, they, their future should be as good as my life has been. And right now we as adults have, have stolen that from them or are stealing it from them actively. So we need to 
start to, to do what needs to be done in order to protect their futures. So, Sadie, last question for you, because as your father's quite rightly outlined, the challenges are immense and the concerns are great for people your age. And yet you said a few minutes ago that being there in the green zone with other young people like yourself, you're, there's hope. So what is giving you hope right now and causing you to be optimistic? Honestly, it's seeing all the people in the green zone and the blue zone that are so committed to working towards something. And for me, ways to combat eco-anxiety is to actually take action. If I'm doing nothing and having eco-anxiety, that is just so much worse than doing something. And that means that in 50 years, if we've solved climate change or not, then I can say that I did something to try and save my planet. So what do you think is the one thing that you're going to do, or a one thing, one thing that you're going to do as a direct result of attending COP26? Definitely, I want to keep the conversation going with doing media as like this, educating the people back home in Calgary about what I'm doing and why it's important to me. Dr. Vipond, Sadie, father and daughter, both so active in the climate file. Thank you very much for the time today. And we'll keep in touch with you as you continue uh, these next couple of days there in Glasgow. Thank you. Thanks so much for caring. Thank you.